justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Okay, here this passage names a number of blessings. Therefore, having been justified by faith, so we have been justified by faith, that we are called righteous through faith in Jesus, that we are called righteous. We have peace with God. So this is another grace. We have a peaceful relationship with God. We are at peace with God now through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. Then we can access by faith through Jesus Christ, faith in Jesus Christ. We can enter the grace in which we stand. We stand in the uh, status of grace when we have faith in Jesus and rejoice in the hope and glory of God that we can rejoice. God will give us joy. God will give us joy so, and also we have hope. One day we'll have the glory of God. So here we have seen a number of, of grace, gr uh, blessings promised to us. We are justified by grace. We have peace with God. Peace. We can access into His grace by faith and we can rejoice in Him, in His hope and also we'll have the glory of God. Okay? Outline. God is all blessings and He's happy to give all these blessings all those blessings to everyone who is justified by faith in salvation. He will give peace, grace, hope, joy, hope, glory. So God has all the blessings. So that's His nature. God has all the blessings. And He's happy to give all these blessings to everyone who is justified by faith in Jesus, who trusts in salvation, who has faith in God to have salvation. He will give peace to us. He give us grace. He gave us joy and hope and glory, all these blessings. Okay, here I did not put down all the points, okay, I will, here I will just name, okay, name some. Uh, for many Christians, even though they believe in Jesus, they don't believe that they have all these blessings. So that's why they don't have strength. They don't have peace. So this is a negative example. Many Christians don't have peace. They are afraid of God. They are afraid that God will punish them. So they live in fear. And they don't believe that they have disgrace. They're always afraid. They are always afraid of losing salvation. And they don't rejoice. And they don't have hope. They only look for money they don't have hope in God and they don't have they don't think of the glory of God now even though we know this but many Christians don't live this out do we always say oh one day I'll be glorified like Jesus I'll be shining like Jesus I'll be perfect like Jesus but we won't be God we won't become God but we'll be perfect in heaven we'll be full of joy and full of peace and full of glory so we are living in this hope. So do we live like this? Do we live and say, oh, I can enjoy God, I can serve Him, I can, I can live in His, his joy and, light, uh, and His hope and His glory. Every day I enjoy Him. Every day I'm strengthened by Him. I have all the blessings of God. So I hope we all live in that condition. So why people don't have that? Because they think that they can pursue God and the world at the same time. They think that when I believe in Jesus, I can also pursue the world. Now, it doesn't mean we don't work. But our heart should be always in God only. That work is just a way we keep ourselves alive. That we can work and have money to provide for us. So that's why we work. But money is not our goal. So we say, Lord, I want to... Uh, God, you have given me all these blessings, so I put my faith in you. 
I have trust in you only. Okay, now how we can have how we can live a life like this? How we can live in life that that we know that for sure we're justified by grace through faith, we have peace with God, we can access into his grace, we're living in his grace. Every day we say, I live in grace, and we rejoice in hope. In his hope, I'm happy all the time, and I have hope, hope of the glory of God. So we should all be living like this. And that is why we, as I said, we want to motivate people with God's grace, not just with the law. If we motivate people with the law, they will say, I have to obey, I have to obey, I have to preach the gospel, I have to pray, I have to read the Bible. Then it becomes heavy. They don't have the joy of the Lord. But we say, everything I do, God is very happy. Then we can rejoice that when I do anything for God, God is very happy. At the same time, I want to obey with the reminder from the law. So how can we have this? First, we have a strong foundation, foundation of our faith. We know that the Bible has a lot of proof. The Bible is for sure uh, the Word of God. It's for sure trustworthy. So I know that the Bible is trustworthy. God is trustworthy. That there are many proofs about the Bible from the prophecies, prophecies from a scientific proof, from that we can experience God, that the work of the Holy Spirit, uh, the healing of God, uh, the miracles of God, and also uh, some people, they can go to heaven and see Jesus. That some people have died and then they, their souls leave the body and some of them go to heaven and go to hell and they came back and tell us exactly what happened. That shows that people have souls. All people have souls. And some people go to heaven and the whole life is changed. And some people go to hell and God gives them the chance to come back and the whole life is also changed. They don't want to go to hell anymore. So these are proofs that we do have a soul and we can have eternal life. So that we build up our faith on the foundation of the Bible, that uh, the proofs from the Bible. And then we believe that we have peace with God. But many Christians don't have that, don't believe that. They think God is not happy with me. God is still criticizing me. God is finding my faults. That is not true. You know, that we know that there is no condemnation when we trust in Jesus and follow Jesus. So I have peace. I know that God is happy with me. So I uh, have this prayer, the interactive prayer. Whenever I pray to God with faith, with a sincere heart, God is very happy with me and God will for sure bless me. So we have this faith all the time. Yes, God is happy with me when I trust in Him and obey Him and follow Him. And God will bless me. So then I have peace in God. And I can have access to His grace. His grace is all the blessings, undeserved grace. We don't deserve the grace, but God wants to give us the grace. So we are living in grace. We are enjoying God's grace. We are motivated by God's grace. We are enjoying everything God gives to us. So that's living in His grace. And we rejoice in the hope. We know that one day we'll be glorified like Jesus. So we rejoice. We, every day we rejoice. So this is the way how we can have faith in God and the peace and the grace of God and the joy and the hope and the glory. A Christian living like that will be enjoying God all the time. I'm living in His grace. I'm living in his joy and I'm enjoying God is so wonderful so wonderful thank you Jesus thank you Jesus I can enjoy you so all Christians should li live like this and that will be a wonderful picture now the law okay this passage doesn't have the law here except that we have access by faith so we can reach by faith you know that we do believe in Jesus Okay, the, uh, so, so we do do something to access this uh, by faith. But from the whole Bible, we can see that people who don't trust in God, who don't obey God, will not 
have these blessings, they will not be justified by grace through faith. They will not be forgiven. They will not have peace. They, you know, actually this happens to many Christians. They, they believe that they are justified by grace through faith, but they, all, they always live in sin. And then they will have no peace inside. They'll, there's always accusation. They always say, I'm not good enough. God is not happy with me. So there's a lot of accusation in their heart. No peace. And they don't live in grace. They live in the law. Now, for Christians, the more they live in, you know, just under the fear of the law, the more they would talk to people with just the law. So some people just preach like this. You have to obey. You have to do this. You have to uh, serve God. You have to love God. You have to read the Bible. You have to pray. It's always telling people what to do. It's, they live under pressure and they make other people live under pressure instead of living under grace. And they lose joy. They don't have joy because, they, there is, uh, because the Holy Spirit will point out our sins. And then when they don't repent, then they don't have the joy and they lose the hope of the glory of God. Okay? Now I want to say something at the end here. Some people might say, if we motivate people with, the, with God's grace, meaning some people will take advantage of it and then they will just be lazy. And that's why I say there is the law. There's a law to remind them. If they don't obey God, there is a consequence. Any kind of small sin, if they just yell at people that, you know, Jesus has said, you know, when we call people raka, when we call people you fool, they will uh, go to hell. They deserve the hell fire, the fire of hell. So the Bible does warn us that if we don't live in Jesus, we don't abide in Jesus, then we'll be like branches thrown to the outside and is put into the fire. So the Bible does tell us that there is warning that for people who say they believe in Jesus but they don't follow the will of my Father who is in heaven, then what happened is they, Jesus said, I don't know you. Jesus will say to them, I don't know you. So there is a warning. We do tell people the warning. But we don't want people to always living under the warning. We tell them, when you love God, then you don't have to worry about anything. God will provide for you. God will strengthen you. God will bless you. Your whole life will go higher and higher. Which way do you want to live? Do you want to live under pressure and have no fruit? Or do you want to live under the grace of God and have fruit? And I know that God will for sure see my good works for Him. God will see my love for Him, my uh, evangelism, how I help people, how I bless people, God will see that and God will remember that and God will bless me. So Christians should be mature to be motivated by God's grace and not to be like a beast that has to be bitten to do hard work. You know, when, when a Christian lives like that, like a beast that has to be bitten to do hard work, He's not enjoying life. He's suffering. But we can be serving God and enjoying God and say, I enjoy God. I'm serving God. God is happy with me. It's so wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can enjoy His presence. I can enjoy His peace. I can enjoy His love. I can enjoy all the gifts of God and His reward. That way we are enjoying life in Jesus. So I hope you see that only when we motivate people with God's grace mainly that will produce Christians who enjoy God and are glad to serve God. That Now some people say, I don't believe that, I have not experienced that, uh, that blesses, God blesses me in every way. Now, we can ask all the Christians for testimonies and ask them, have you experienced blessings from God when you obey Him? So you can ask in your church, have you experienced blessings in your life when you obey God, when you love God, when you pray to Him? That Christians will tell us, yes, we have experienced that. So that will encourage us. And also for Christians who have followed God for a long time, obeyed God for a long time, they can tell you, in my whole lifetime I can see God's blessings. I can see 
God's work in my life that He has blessed me in so many ways. And then Christians who don't obey God, that you can see that their life is full of pain and suffering, negative emotions, and they don't get strength from God. So they have all kinds of problems. So I hope we all believe that, yes, the Lord has everything in His hand. All the blessings, all the resources are in His hand. And for those who love Him and obey Him, God sees that and God will for sure reward us. So I hope you all understand that. In the future, when we preach, we don't just say people, you have to obey the, uh, God, you have to preach the gospel, you have to love God, you have to uh, you know, just tell them what to do. But we can tell people, whenever you pray to God, God is very happy for sure. He'll respond to you and He'll bless you when you pray with a sincere heart. A heart to say, yes, Lord, I want to give my best to you. Now, when people say, yes, I want to serve God, but I have some selfish desire, then God knows it. <clears throat> we cannot escape the eyes of God. He can see our secret sins, our secret motive. Some people want to serve God because they want to be famous. They want people to say, wow, He is so powerful. He has the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Some people just want that praise from people. Then God is not happy with that. So we should understand that. We cannot escape God's eyes. And then when we serve God and love God totally, we for sure will receive blessings and our whole life will go higher and higher. And for Christians who don't follow God totally or have wrong motives, they for sure they will suffer. So we want to live in the grace of God. We enjoy God all the time and we are motivated to serve God. Like for myself, you know, I'm already 70 years old, 70. But I still want to serve God. I want to, I want to serve God more. I want to tell people more about Jesus. I want to train people more to serve God. Why? Because I want people to enjoy God. I enjoy God so much, I want more people to enjoy God. Because I know that God will seize my heart and God will for sure remember and, and reward me. But I don't mainly serve for the reward. I just trust in God's goodness. I know that He will pour goodness into my life all my life long. All my life long, I will enjoy God. I will enjoy His blessings. I will enjoy serving God. Everything in my life will be full of joy and peace and love and kindness and goodness. So I want to serve God. I want to live as long as God allows me. I want to serve God until I cannot talk at all. So I, even when I cannot talk, I can write. You know, I want to serve God every minute until I don't have the ability to do that at all. So that my motivation is, God is so wonderful, I just want to enjoy Him. So I hope that you all preach like this, that you enjoy God first. You believe that God is full of blessings. God will give us the resource and the strength and the talents and the opportunity, everything we need. God has a wonderful plan to bless us all when we trust in Him and follow Him and love Him and obey Him in every way. Okay? Let us have a prayer now. Please stand up. Because when we stand up, it's easier to experience His, his peace and His power when He uh, brings His peace to you. Okay, please stand up and open your heart and close your eyes. You can raise up your hands to God. Lord, we thank You, thank You, thank You because You are a God of grace. You are full of grace. You are full of mercy. You are full of compassion. You want to pour Your blessings into our life. You want us to enjoy You. You want us to enjoy loving You and serving You and glorifying You. You want us to enjoy our whole life. Thank You, Lord Jesus. You are so wonderful. You are the best that can happen to us. We, when we have Jesus, we have everything. Jesus is the best. Jesus is the best. I want Jesus. We want Jesus. We want everyone to enjoy Jesus and enjoy serving God and loving God. God is so wonderful. God is so good. Please help us to love you, to love you more and more, to enjoy you more and more, to serve you more and more out of your grace, be motivated by your grace. Lord Jesus, help us to enjoy you. And also, we should have the reminder and the warning from the law 
that when we don't obey God, when we don't serve God, when we don't love God, there is always destruction. Help us to, to be motive by your, motivated by your grace that we would want to enjoy you and obey you and love you and glorify you. Lord, please help us to build up more Christians to live in your grace, to build up more Christians to love you and obey you, that they want to dedicate their life to you. Thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. Come, Lord Holy Spirit. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Take away our burdens. Take away our burdens. Give us joy and peace and love. Give us the motivation to serve you and love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, God bless you. I hope that you all learn to enjoy God and enjoy His grace. Now, first is to enjoy God. That we like God. We are pleased with God. We are delighted with God. That we like God and we like His grace and like his work everything about god i like and i like the church of god the church of god is the people of god i like the church of god and so i want to bless everyone i want to help everyone so i hope everyone have this heart to live in god's grace and to be motivated by god god's grace and enjoy god's grace and to bless people all the time instead of just telling people what to do what to do we tell people what to do, but we tell them the motivation is from God's grace and His love and His motivation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're so wonderful. Please strengthen us, transform our life, use our life mightily. And also, we want to pray for Africa. Lord Jesus, have mercy upon Africa. In many places, there is lockdown. There's also a control of how many people can they have in the meetings, Lord. Have, Lord have mercy upon them and please keep us safe from the virus stop the spreading of the virus Lord Jesus please have mercy upon your people change your people give us strength and joy and love and give us health Lord Jesus help us to be to take care of our spiritual life and also our physical life we want to don't want to expose ourselves to danger of uh, getting this virus. We want to, to protect ourselves, to take care, of, take care of our health. Thank you, Jesus. Please have mercy on the churches of Africa, that the churches will be strong and, and healthy and uh, be glorifying God all the time, be serving God all the time. Thank you, Jesus. In